What's up guys, today we're going to be coding a 3D game engine, start to finish, entirely from scratch, using only my text editor. Yeah, this is probably going to take a while, so get comfy. First step, get the project set up. For this, I'll be using the Snake language. Even though I'm mostly JavaScript main, yeah, you've got to admit, Python is so easy to write. Plus, the tutorial I got explaining this stuff was actually written in Python, and as much as I wanted to, I was too lazy to rewrite the whole thing in JavaScript. So after about what seemed like two millennium, we finally have a blank window. God, this joke's getting old. Anyways, the idea is to build an engine similar to what was used far back in the year 1992, for the first ever first person shooter game, Wolfenstein 3D. The concept behind this engine isn't so difficult to grasp, which is actually one of the main reasons I chose it for this video. Honestly, I was already having nosebleeds just trying to understand what the fuck meshes and chunks are. Anyways, the engine performs using something called a ray casting algorithm, which according to Google is the most basic of many computer graphics range and blah blah blah. Long story short, you're basically displaying a 2D plane in a 3D format. In reality, the 3D display is actually in a 2D plane, but it allows you to have an illusion of a three-dimensional space, aka pseudo 3D. The first step is to draw a 2D map on the screen. An easy way to do this is by using a matrix where a value represents a block of space on the map. For the beginning stage, we can start with a matrix of ones and zeros. Ones representing walls and zeros representing empty spaces. We then look through the matrix and draw the walls at their respective positions with the values provided by the matrix. For the player slash camera perspective, which is you, first of all, we need to define the player's position, angle, speed, as well as rotation speed. The point of having an angle is to tell which direction a player should move. For example, if the player is here and its angle is somewhere here, then if we press, let's say, W you to move forward that will be the direction the player will move at to do this using the player's angle and speed we can calculate the dx the y increment of the player's coordinates using the trigonometric functions of sine and cosine we then use the same principle to apply for other keys movements all this written in a movement function will look something like this this alone works fine but we still need to check for wall collisions because this doesn't look right <laughs> To do this is pretty easy, we just need to get the values of dx, dy increments and only allow movements if there is no wall detected at that position. With this part of the stage completed, we can move on to more interesting things. So can anyone tell me what raycasting is? Yes, you there, the incredibly handsome guy at the back. Raycasting is the act of casting rays. Get out of my class. Wait, what? The idea of recasting is casting a given number of rays at a certain field of view of the player, then calculating the intersection points of each ray with the walls they collide with. Since our map is basically a grid, we can use this to our advantage and calculate the ray's intersection with the horizontal and vertical lines of the grid. But vertical lines intersection, we can see the ray intersection along the x-axis moves to a distance dx equal to the size of the grid. The movement along the y-axis dy, in this case, varies, so its value needs to be calculated. For the case of horizontal lines intersection, the opposite is the case. dy is equal to the size of the grid while dx is calculated. Aside this, we also need to calculate the ray distance between each intersection, also known as delta depth, so we can tell the distance between the player and the wall of each of the rays. With all this implemented, we can then use the data from these calculations to write a ray casting loop. If a ray intersects with the wall, we break the loop. If it didn't, we cast the ray further, increasing its size by the values of dx, dy, and search for more collisions. Now we've cut down all the ray intersections to just the two that intersect with the wall, so now all we need to do is to get the shortest delta depth amongst the two which is the one we need. If all goes well, the result should look something like this. Now we have the recasting working correctly, we then move on to project out to the ray caster in a 3D format, we simply need to draw a screen the size of the player's field of view at the correct distance from the player. To get the screen distance, we first of all need to get the target value of half the field of view, then divide half the width of the screen by the value to get the screen distance. Then for the height of the projection of the walls, its values and depth will be directly proportional to the projected height of the screen and its screen distance. And since our wall height is 1, then the projected height will be equal to the screen distance divided by the depth of the wall. The general idea is pretty much the same as how we view objects in real life. The size of an object will increase or decrease in our field of view depending on its distance from us the result looks something like this all right this is good but we can go further by adding depth to the lightning to make it look a bit more realistic an easy way to do this would be to use the depth of the ray and change the shade of the wall color in respect to its value the final stage of building the engine is adding textures. For this, we need to go back to our map and upgrade our matrix by adding more values aside zeros and ones. And each value will now represent a texture type. Since our engine display is made up of rectangles, the height being the projected height of a given ray and its scale, we can use these values provided to draw our texture on the plane. But that's not all we need to do. 
sadly. We still need to calculate the texture of said value. I'll try not to bore you with the details, but the general idea is we basically just need to check all cases for when a ray hits the wall, which is the cosine value of the ray when its angles are negative and the same when the angle is positive for vertical collisions. We do the same for horizontal collisions, only that instead of finding the cosine values, we calculate its sine value, making a total of four cases to consider. Now we just simply delete our previous color render, implement all that gibberish I spoke five seconds ago into code, and we have textures. And with this, we can confidently say our engine is complete. This, of course, will be the basis at which we can expand upon and build 3D games, like a first person shooter, for example. But I'll leave that for a future video. But before I go, I would like to thank Coder Space. He's a programming YouTuber. This guy is a programming beast. It was actually from him I learned the stuff from, and he has like an entire one hour video dedicated to just to recasting and 3D game programming. His channel, honestly, is one of those rare gems you find on YouTube. It makes absolutely insane content. Of course, I'll drop a link to his channel below. Feel free to check him out. Subscribe.